Hey there, Raquel Dancho here, Member of Parliament for Kildonan and St. Paul and Shadow Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship coming to you today with a weekly update about the throne speech which dropped this week and wow was it underwhelming. Just to recap, the Trudeau government prorogued Parliament, they shut down Parliament six weeks ago in anticipation of this grandiose throne speech that was going to have all the answers and bring us out of the pandemic and keep Canadians safe and it was going to be a revolutionary green throne speech. Uh, it was none of those things. And in fact, it was basically just a campaign promise roundup of everything the Liberals have been talking about for the past five years and also the past 30 years. And I'll go into that a little bit later. but. There really was not a lot new in this at all and certainly no reason. There was nothing in here that gave a reason that they needed to prorogue Parliament. And remember when they did that, it shut down the We Scandal investigation that was really starting to heat up. We were going to be receiving very uh, interesting secret government documents about the We Scandal uh, and then all the investigations were shut down. Also, all the other committees that were investigating the impact and studying the impact of the pandemic on all different aspects of our economy and our Canadian people, uh, all of that good work was going on. All of that came to a close as well. Nothing was going forward. Parliament stopped for six weeks for this. And there is nothing really new in here, nothing for Canadians to really bite into, to say, hey, the Liberal government has a strategy. They're gonna bring us through this. They're gonna keep us healthy, nothing. And one thing that the Conservatives have been really pushing that we really wanted to see is rapid and at-home testing for COVID-19. We are severely lagging behind other developed nations across the world, other trusted allies that we have. We're talking about Germany, Japan, the UK, the United States. It's actually endless the amount of other countries that are months ahead of us distributing rapid testing to their, to their, to their public. Even in the UK, it's provided free at-home testing. It's amazing. In some of the countries that we that we know are doing this, you can get a result within 15 minutes from the comfort comfort of your home. 15 minutes, you can find out if you have COVID-19. Just imagine how life-changing this would be for Canadians to know that you can go visit your elderly parents uh, and you don't that you don't have COVID, that your child doesn't have to isolate because someone in school had it, uh, that you can safely go to work, that our frontline healthcare workers can feel safe. You know, it's it's literally endless how life changing rapid testing would be. And yet the Liberal government is dragging its heels severely. And, and frankly, Trudeau promised this to Canadians very strongly back in March. Six months later, we're nowhere on this. So that's what we were looking for, a strategy to ensure that we would have rapid at home testing. And um, it's nowhere. So that was that was the number one most disappointing thing for me, since it would be so life changing for Canadians. Uh, the second thing is, and I've, and I've been alluded to this, but the trampling on provincial jurisdiction. Uh, last week, a number of premiers from across the pro uh, country, including Brian Pallister, traveled to Ottawa to tell uh, Justin Trudeau, in anticipation of his throne speech, what they needed as provinces. Provinces uh, know what's best and know what they need on the ground. And, and yet, Trudeau didn't include any of their asks at all. They were asking for more healthcare transfers, greater healthcare transfers to deal with the pandemic and aging populations, increased healthcare wait times, and none of that was included in this at all. They did all that work to go out there and talk to him, and he didn't even consider it. That's very disappointing, and we know that that's true because resoundingly across the country, premiers came out after this and said, hey, this is our jurisdiction that you're trampling on, and you didn't mention anything that we'd asked you for. And jurisdictionally, uh, the Liberals in this are talking about childcare, pharmacare, um, all different types of things that are resoundingly and constitutionally the responsibility of the provinces. And I will just remind the viewers, uh, many of you know this, but uh, pharmacare was first talked about by the Liberals in 1997. Childcare, 1993. So I was a little, little child when the Liberals first started promising these things. Here we are almost 30 years later and they're promising the same things. So they have no credibility, no credibility that they're going to fulfill any of these promises at all. And we had heard anticipation that they were going to be, it was kind of going to be a green throne speech. Actually very little of it in here was about tangible things that we can do to support our environment. They again promised two billion trees. They promised that in the last election, that was over a year ago, not one has been planted. Um, rather than talking about existing industries that we know produce millions of jobs, uh, agriculture, uh, manufacturing, 
ener the energy sector, rather than providing supports for existing industries that are suffering, they're talking about making, I don't know, ca car batteries. Like, the priorities of this government are all over the place. And for, for me, someone who hopes to live a long life and enjoy a clean, wonderful, healthy environment for you know, years to come, what I wanted to see was some concrete investments that were going to help our natural environment. So, for example, uh, in Kildonan and St. Paul, we have the North End Sewage uh, Treatment Plant that processes 70% of Winnipeg's sewage. Not a glamorous topic, but the reality is it's not... The sewage treatment plant is severely outdated, needs massive investments, almost a billion dollars of investments because we're polluting our lakes and that's our river and it's, you know, going into Lake Winnipeg and contributing to the, you know, the algae problem that we're seeing there. And, and this is a concern to tens of thousands of Manitobans who enjoy Lake Winnipeg. And part of the solution is upgrading this plant. So that is a green investment that needs to happen. We've seen the uh, the city of Winnipeg and the province of Manitoba come together on this. That's great to see. Great work done by my civic and provincial counterparts. And now it's just sort of stuck in the bureaucratic red tape under the infrastructure minister, Catherine McKenna. She just needs to approve this and stop dragging her heels. And we can actually make a green infrastructure investment in Kildon and St. Paul that supports the city of Winnipeg, that supports Lake Winnipeg. Like this is a no brainer. This needs to happen. It's a $321 million investment from the federal government. They're spending money like it grows on trees. So why not throw Winnipeg money they desperately need to support our environment here? It's a no-brainer to me. So I wanted to see uh, strategic infrastructure investments. I wanted to see rapid testing. Again, this is top hot topic right now. You, many of you have seen this on the news. I'll just conclude with saying... If you have to wait six hours, some areas of Canada, you have to wait six hours in the elements, like in the rain and, and winter's coming to get a COVID test. And many folks are turned away when they get to the end of the line because they reach capacity at the testing center. In Winnipeg, we're seeing long lines as well. And you know what the Liberals are trying to do about this? They're trying to blame the provinces for long wait times. The provinces. This is strictly the problem of the federal government dragging its heels and not approving rapid testing that is approved by developed nations, our trusted allies across the world. It is their fault that we are not seeing rapid testing, that people are having to wait in lines. I get a little heated about this because it really is, it really is something we need to do and that they're not focusing on, that they're not taking seriously. So I will say, I will conclude by saying this document is more of a campaign promise document. This is not something that gives... Canadians hope that they have a strategy for our economy, a strategy to keep Canadians safe, that they care about national unity, that they care about real economic investments like green infrastructure. It, it was very disappointing that six weeks went by, all this hype, and for really not a lot at all. So I'm going back to Ottawa on Sunday. So I have a couple of days. I'm, I will be delivering a response to this, this, this campaign style throne speech. I would love to hear from you. What do you want to see in my speech? What are your priorities? What does your family care about? What, what are the industry that you're working in? What, what are the impacts that have been impacting you? What do you want to see investment wise from the federal government? I want to hear what your thoughts are. And I would love to include some of that in my response to the speech from the throne. Uh, which will be coming down likely on, on Monday. So look to that, and I'll be coming to you with more personal updates uh, next week as well about how it's all going in Ottawa and what the Liberals are up to. So stay tuned.